the 18th day of 20, 23 September. I'm going to be your host tonight, Dana Durnford. Hope you're having as good a day as possible. Always takes me a few moments to get up to speed. And we got a new cycle to cover today. We're going to pick up a few headlines from Thursdays we didn't cover. You kind of might remember the radium hand cleaner cleans off everything but the skin. That'll fall off later. This is an interesting headline. Apple to update iPhone 12 in France over radiation. Which is the older iPhone, I do believe, is it? There was too much uh, electromagnetic radiation. Apple was told to fix the issue, so they issued a update for France only. Everybody else worldwide can get electromagnetically sick and no one cares. The World Health Organization sought to allay fears about the radiation emitted by the mobile phones. Like These are not your authorities. This is a corporation. Why is anybody... The media gives them legitimacy and Hollywood gives them legitimacy, but that doesn't give them legitimacy. That's a construct. That's a f fictional, fictitious and dangerous thing to be doing, by the way. The international uh, UN writer says there's no evidence to include exposures to low level electromagnetic fields is harmful to humans. Of course, I've actually done entire presentations just on cell phones. Cell phone, these are studies, cell phone might impair semen quality. If it's going to do it for the, a human, an adult, what's it going to do to the birds and insects, I wonder? Cell phone use might impair semen quality. Many reports of radio frequency, electromagnetic radiation, like cell phones can have adverse effects on the brain, heart, the thyroid, uh, cause tumors, electromagnetic radiation reduces sperm's mobility. This is humans. We're, we're way more tolerant than the birds, the animals, the insects are, and children. Just because your children don't have a cell phone don't mean you're not pounding them with radiation every second of their lives, which yours. Mobile phone radiation damages lab's DNA. It's so interesting when you hear them say there's no evidence, but the minute you look, all you do is find endless evidence. The risk of headaches is increasingly being reported by a detrimental effect of mobile phone use. And then one even had the area, one study even claimed it had homesis, that it was good for you. It stimulated health in you. Long phone term phone use doubles the occurrence of rare tumors, by the way. But no, we'll just get some fictitious fictional Authority, like, well, pick your poison, in this case, World Health Organization, which is corporation. Why is the corporation taking over your planet, and why are you sitting and allowing them to do it? And the BBC, of course, how can you be trusting them after Jimmy Savile? Now regulator, regulators from Belgium, Netherlands, Germany are now looking into the issue as if they didn't already. This was a little video somebody popped out. And I scooped some of the screen captures. Japan, by the way, has been releasing the radiation uh, non-stop. The, the buildings are actually 
buildings are actually some are actually destroyed, right? Where am I too here? Bear with me. I just want to show you the craziness. Every time I see the word released, then you you got to think about the reality where the reactors actually blew up. There, there's no way to contain it. These are endless models from major institutions. This is the Norwegian Institute of Air Research showing the entire planet covered in radioactive fallout, sustained continuous plume. Japan says the contaminated water is safe. to touch any buttons here. <laughs> Japan says that the water is safe, but uh, you can't go back and live in these communities in the red. But it's safe at ground zero. Don't worry about that. And then suggesting that they just started releasing radiation is pretty disturbing, I would hope. You'll agree with me when you look at the actual buildings, not the fake ones, but the actual real ones. And you see the buildings don't even exist. And there's four of them are gone. Reactor three and four are very obvious, but the media has never showed you these pictures. For some reason, they're, the pictures they showed you are people that are pretending they're in a building that doesn't even exist. And so you are in so much danger, your, your loved ones, your children, your communities, the species of the planet you're supposed to be the steward of, are, f um, are jeopardized because the complacency of everybody. Our nuclear wastewater is absolutely safe. Well, why are you, you got people pretending they're in buildings that don't even exist? And why aren't you back there? How can all these communities be unsafe, but uh, Ground Zero is somehow safe? And they're pretending that, n and they got people worked up believing that nothing has gotten out. And the official story is only 2.2 .2 grams. That's all. That's it. That's everything that got out of the buildings that don't even exist. Have lost their four decades of the inventories. Remember, Chernobyl was a brand new reactor. Enemy of the world, Kushida. Well, but it's Japan. You can't. Did they go through prime ministers like we go to uh, toothbrush? Made in Japan? No, it's this is a global event. This is not cut and dry. There's four buildings. Reactor one also, reactor two, reactor three, and reactor four. Reactor 1 detonated, lost its fuel pool right away. So when you look at it, it's hard to comprehend the significance of what just happened. But when you see the plume that emanated, does that look like it threw off some shingles off the roof and, uh, and some boarding on the walls? Or does that look like something, there was a huge emissions? then you would be right if you believe the latter. Evil Japan. And it's obviously whoever done that, they they done it digitally, I guess, and then imported it. Pretty clever. Minister vows to counter misinformation. 
over Fukushima water release, counter misinformation. Please make a greater effort to deal with misinformation regarding the release of the treated water in the sea from the buildings at Fukushima on Sunday. So how do you stop radiation from getting out of a building that don't even exist anymore? Because it's all got out to one time. The Shimura visited four coastal municipalities. A Minamasoma, we know is a nuclear wasteland. A Kuma, which is um, just a couple of kilometers from the ongoing meltdown, the same as Futabar. Kuma is on the north side, Futabar is on the south side. They're joined at the hip with the actual site. These are communities. Nami has been abandoned, same as Akuma, Futabar, and, and Minamasoma have all been abandoned for many years. But it's, there's nothing getting out, everything is safe. They're going to counter the rumors. Reputational damage. But what about the damage to the 8 million species, the food chain, the, the ecosystem, the water, fresh water has all been compromised worldwide. It's not, it's true, it's not just Japan. It's a 80 years of emissions. But it's also true that this was a major pulse event and that these meltdowns, the inventories were bigger than all previous known nuclear meltdowns and accidents combined from the single site. And so when you look at the, the way the dispersion is, this model is based on 16 days, I believe, or 20 days in a second and a half. Uh, 20 days right there. 25 days right there. And 30 days, 31 days right there. Thir so 31 days, in reality, just 20 days later, the whole plan is covered. Um, the food was banned by 55, uh, 55 countries in 14 prefectures. I highlighted them for you to the left. And to the right, what you're looking at is farmers in Futaba, which is two kilometers from the ongoing nuclear meltdowns, harvesting food alongside of one ton bags of radiation. And, and you know, I, I've been covering this for day one, but I still can't comprehend that picture because that's in the middle of 14 prefectures that were banned by 55 countries for a decade. But they're gonna, they're gonna counter any harmful rumors when they're poisoning you, blatantly poisoning you worldwide. Each of the prefectures consider about a billion pounds of product coming out. I'm beginning to wonder, will the planet ever wake up? And what's the consequences of not? There's 865,000 cancers in the first year. Not everybody got health care. Not everybody got diagnosed. Not everybody knew they were sick. Not everybody understood they need or or went or willing to go to doctors or able to get an appointment. Or there's 1,800 other diseases. There's heart, liver, lung, respiratory, pituitary, thyroid, adrenaline, Alzheimer's, dementia, autism, diabetes, Down syndrome, schizophrenia. The list is so long. Then manifest before cancer. Cancer is latent. Tokyo Electric Power Company is holding, started to release the water on August the 24th. But the buildings were all gone on the 16th of March. So if the releases were consistent since the 16th of March, and within 20 days it had covered the planet, and they're worried about reputational damage, and that they're, they're claiming they only started to release the water, and the official story is that only 2.2 grams 
<clears throat> Only 2.2 grams is, that's what they're saying now came out of it. And you're getting it from South Korea on uh, July the 13th, this story showed up and this has been the official story ever since, which is two months. Now, this is a professor of nuclear and quantum engineering. And they're saying science outweighs irrational reasoning. And so the buildings have lost millions and millions of pounds each. And they say it's like discharging three sugar cubes into the ocean total from buildings that don't exist. And that the total amount of radiation from the mass of huge reactors with decades of reactor cores in the fuel pools, that, and this has all gone through chain reactions, so this is the important stuff. That makes six reactor cores per, per fuel pool. There's two fuel pools right at the very top of each building, and that don't exist. There's only stumps left. is saying that 2.2 grams is all it got out of the buildings that had millions and millions of pounds each because they don't have a repository anywhere in Japan. And that each year would be 0 0.062 grams is what they're going to release into the ocean. And I'm looking for something to help articulate 0 0.06 grams. So you can see this is like a jack, right? A little tiny tip there, the very tip, the very tip. What you're talking about releasing each year is is smaller. Maybe I can do it. this one. It makes more sense for you. It's smaller, and because uh, the camera's quite a ways away from me, it's smaller than the very tip. So if you just snipped off the very, very, very tip of something this so you see how big my fingers are gapped if you just took the very tip off that that's what they're talking about releasing each year but in reality the buildings have lost around 10 reactor cores that were the equivalent of hundreds of Chernobyl's reactor cores because these are pure uranium pure plutonium the International Atomic Energy Agency's um, spokesperson failed to call concerns about Fukushima wastewater dumping. Uh, that the report they gave to Japan's, I guess, so much fanfare from the media worldwide, and that has been referred to constantly, is neither a recommendation nor an endorsement of the Japanese policy. And the whole world media has led you away from the reactors. They've never shown you these pictures. He fed you the apologist for now, the industry I built, itself. The division I ran built nuclear fuel racks for boiling water reactors exactly like Fukushima. So if he doesn't know, and who does? Unit 4 it has always been my biggest concern. If you watched our website, on the very first week of the accident, I was saying that if Unit 4 were to catch fire, you'd have to evacuate Tokyo. Does it look like a cough for it or anybody? Is that just me? 865,000 extra cancers in the first year, but there's 1,800 diseases you need to worry about. Then you need to worry. you got to be start being realistic. Tokyo Electric Power Company's holdings started to release the water on August the 24th. So on August the 24th, over 12 years later, after this happened, they're going to start releasing water. Do you get the disconnect? And so by the time you're water, you don't think about food. You think about seafood instead of what you should and need to think about. 
You need to think about it because it's already proven to be a huge issue. In the first round, they done that because of the blowback from South Korea, which is, they wanted it. They wanted people to protest tritium instead of the actual reactors, uh, missions that has been going on for 12 years. 7,800 tons of, and the word treated, you can't treat it because the, it had, you're pouring it over a reactor course, picking up the particulates, the pellets, the you know, it's pellet fuel that's going to be in the water itself, which is splitting atoms on top of it. Very, 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 very high doses per liter. You're talking about lethal doses per liter. And if you pump that up, you can never go near the pump or the hoses ever again. And certainly it's lethal doses to walk past these things. So the enormity of what they're claiming, you know, if it goes into filter, how do you change the filter at thousands of sievers after an hour? Because we know it's over 2.2 sievers of beta. What about alphas, gammas, neutrons? And you can't have all of that without x-rays. We will continue. These are full body x-rays, full body gamma shines, full body ne neutron bombardments. Um, if you fill up the tank with this stuff, for, um, because the the ELP system, there was no, it didn't work in two th up in 2014. We know that the Riva system, which was similar, d which was the French system, didn't work in 2014. We know that the Siri S A R R Y the C C one thirty seven reclamation machine didn't work. We know that. And in 2013, we never heard of it after. Because like. You can put 200 million atoms in the head of a needle, but you can't see it. Okay, so you got 200 millions in the head of million atoms. 200 million. Try counting the 200 million to comprehend. You can't just pick it out yourself or something with sophisticated equipment. So 200 million atoms in the head of a needle. So imagine how much is in a 300,000 ton tank. But 200 million atoms in the head of a needle and say a million is uranium, a million is plutonium, a million is cesium-137, a million is cesium-130, and the list goes on and on for 200 isotopes. How do you now separate cesium from the thousand other fission products? Because that's what the, the series system is alleging to do. And they say, when they're putting through a filter and it only picks up the cesium, but cesium Isotope is the exact same size as the uranium, plutonium, the americium, the neptunium, the strontium, everything else. And that Okuma Futabara Nami has been abandoned for 12 years. They, they tricked a few people recently in the last couple of years going back to Nami, but Futabara and Okuma, uh, these are not, you don't live there. These are 100% percent uh, nuclear wastelands that they relabeled as a no-go zone to 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 be even more dishonest in the craziness they've already exhibited. So he went to Minima Soma and brought a live broadcast at a beach to promote post-disaster construction, but uh, all these communities are surrounded. I'll show you what the game is. Because it's quite interesting. And we talked about this as it was happening. So the, the white spots are the spots they opened last year. But you got to go into a nuclear wasteland to get there to your... There's only a couple of houses in these nuclear wastelands. And you can't stay in the garden. you got to keep your windows closed. And the list goes on. When you leave, you can't stop the car. you got to get the hell out of Dodge. And the yellow is the spots they opened this year. And that's the spots that the the minister, if that's what you want to call him, that's the spots that he's doing the press conferences for. And then he's getting out of there immediately if he's even there in the first place because the red is nuclear wastelands. They call it difficult to return zones, but they're, they are, they are nu what we... Everywhere else on the entire planet calls a nuclear wasteland. Difficulty return is a completely um, 
disconnect of the reality. With the sanctions, of course, by the IAEA, who's orchestrating every bit of this, we're seeing, because they need to in order to have the media worldwide regurgitate the same narrative to make it work in the first place. The universities have to participate in this bold hoodwinking of the entire planet. What you're seeing right now, uh, a concerted effort, is South Korea, Taiwan, China um, are being uh, leveraged against the population of the Asian countries and continent, which is a significant fraction of the entire planet, and very vulnerable uh, at that. And they're so confident, they're claiming that nothing got out on Yttridium, which asks the questions, then why can't you go back to these places? Because we've never heard them mention the word Tritium for them places. And they're only acknowledging cesium, by the way, for them places. The reactor's biggest byproduct of the radiated fuel rods is the curium isotope. And curium isotope, you need lead shielding for, say, curium-244, 20 times thicker than you do for plutonium-238. We want to advance construction and cooperation with people all over the world, which, if they're smart, will reject uh, Japan. Japan has uh, demonstrated clearly that it has no control and there's nothing good exported from that country for anybody else. The event was also attended by the Liberal Democratic Party lawmakers of a surfing, surfing, and most surfers, bless their hearts, are stupid if they go to that place. Kazomi stressed how safe that fishery products from Fukushima were, telling reporters that he'll fight against the claims that are not based on science over the treated, treated water. We'll challenge that in a second. Okay, we'll challenge it right now. I just think it's really important that I take the extra time every time to explain certain facets of the story that reson are recirculated. Now, over and over and over by them in order to make the majority of the population complacent through repetitive propaganda. <coughs> they built all the tanks in 2013. Water above a sievert an hour per liter. It's actually 2.2 sieverts per liter. So let me explain the tanks to you. The Riva system, 2014 in April, three years, one month later, hadn't yet to function reliably. Well, what that means is it didn't function and that there's spots on the site they couldn't even go to because of lethal doses. And tritium never gets mentioned in any of these older equations. Uh, three and a half years later, August 12, 2014, the Areva filtration system had yet to be used. So you got no filtration in 2014, but there's you had 2014, they were going to have a bypass operation, stop water coming down the mountain from flowing through the plant and getting irradiated. That didn't work. They were going to build a, a billion dollar fence to stop radiation from leaking, which is, how can you mention the word leaking and talk about a nuclear meltdown at the same time is terrifying that people like that actually exist. And they was going to spend a billion dollars on it. The ice wall, of course, why would you build an ice wall where you could build a real wall? Allegedly 260,000 people worked on it which means everybody made $1,200 each if you don't build a wall. But they admit that that didn't work. How can it? There's no top, there's no bottom. So you had 3 million Beckwells per square meter in planes that flew, American planes that were 1,000 feet above the ground. That tells you how scary radiation pulses actually are. 
at 3 million becquerels per square meter. And that the Siri system in 2013 in January was the last time we heard of it. And you can't separate cesium. Look at the time machine for five or six of these headlines. March the 15th, everything is under control. And that was an appropriate statement. France says Japan has lost control and the French should leave the country. France is not naive. They're not gullible. They're not stupid. They're just terrible, terrible. And when it comes to nuclear industry, they're horrific. You know, they got... Like French, I'll tell you why French knows. Is the French Polynesians, they, the nuclear weapons the French used on the French Polynesians would have been equal to a Nagasaki a plutonium bomb. Nagasaki bomb was plutonium. Hiroshima was a, a uranium. That was Hiroshima was the first one. And a few days later was a Nagasaki, which was a plutonium bomb. So Japan was m definitely 100% an experiment. These were untouched cities, and there's mostly women and children, right? And that's what a military does. It doesn't, it doesn't want to get killed, so it attacks the women and children to force a country to com so-called comply to their um, violent demands. So when France says Japan has lost control, the French will leave the country, they have a legacy, and they know what they're talking about. So what they done to the French Polynesians was equal to a nuclear bomb every week for 12 years in the French Polynesian and radioactive fallout. So you can believe the French, see? They've been more than evil. They're sure evil, so they know. The Swiss embassy evacuated Tokyo, but now they're backing nuclear? Now they're backing... The, the, the lie of the tritium into the ocean when it's non-stop for 12 years. Tokyo's lost almost all control of events. There were people speaking out originally, and then they were silenced or fired and replaced or bought up the medias, and the editors wouldn't allow any more descending voices. And lucky for us, we captured... a lot of these reports and are um, unassailable, incontestable documentation. Nuclear report warns of an apocalyptic scenario at Fukushima in the weeks ahead and it could one day be dis considered to start the ultimate catastrophe of the world and the planet. The ultimate catastrophe, and because radiation covers the planet in just less than a month in every model, there's not a single model where it doesn't cover the planet in a month, and that's from all the major shakers and movers, all the governments and universities. It's uncontestable documentation. South Korea, 2011, called Japan's handling of Fukushima incompetent. Today they call them genius, a different administration. So what's the point of having a government if the next administration is going to sell your soul so they can profit off it for four years. And you keep that battle going and everybody's fighting with the politics instead of the root of the problem. So, you know, if your leg is hanging off you from an accident, you don't stick a band-aid on it and go home and go to bed. You go to the hospital, right? This is this is common stuff. Well, they're not demonstrating any of these attributes whatsoever. Japan's professor, a thousand years from now, contaminated water from Fukushima will be still may still be entering the Pacific Ocean. Well, of course it will be. Tepco done nothing for two years to stop the highly radioactive water. Turned out two years later they still done nothing. Turns out twelve years later they still done nothing. You know why I can say that? Because I have the incontestable documentation of it. But there's a ton of people that will not hesitate to digitally assassinate 
your future and your loved ones and your friends and your families and the eight million species future and you know where where's the balance here where's the checks and balances well there's not they got free reign and because there's no challenges because there's no incentive not to be evil they become inherently more uh, bold and ridiculous and hateful and harmful i think is the most important word here the negative public perception of nuclear energy is posing more risk than its actual threat and the population doesn't even understand doesn't even understand the real picture so imagine the population happens to break free of this censorship and get a glimpse of what really happened D and the censorship is it's obviously this takes a lot of people for that to work to keep this silent for so long you're gonna have to employ a lot of people and they're gonna have to be quick paying attention to who's picking up this information and unfortunately as sadly and terrifyingly, there's only one place where you're going to pick up this information. Currently, there's a lot of fears and misinformation with Japan's release. Fear and misinformation is a move scientifically deemed an extremely low risk. Scientifically deemed, says the, um, whatever creature that one is scientifically deemed a low risk but the billings are actually gone that's scientifically already proven but if you go look at the people that are trying to persuade you it's all of them that is not gone and they've went to the end of the world they've done the most extreme the most extreme laws I've actually ever seen, and I've seen some doozies, but what we see manifesting from the nuclear industry is the most extreme laws we've ever heard or witnessed. I've never, I don't have another event that I can compare the propaganda to where the people to the right, and many, many like them, these are the major medias, uh, had sustained promoted the pictures to the right as the building to the left and that is un unimaginable because you're talking about the producers the editors the makeup artists the every single person that works at these big cbs or bbc or cnn or abc and all the other media every single person that works in those studios and those facilities and drives their trucks and and in the mail room all had to know that that wasn't real for that to work and so there's a lot of people that know the difference is what I'm uh, I'm, I'm very painfully aware of and so this this is a whole different level of contempt for humanity eight million species this is a disregard and for what to protect an industry that it has shown without a, without a doubt that it is the enemy of humanity is the enemy of the eight million species the enemy of oxygen it's the actual enemy of oxygen it destroys the oxygen production of the planet the phytoplankton and the trees and it does the trees by destroying the bacteria and the fungus which the trees are dependent upon Vice President of Public Policy at C3 Solution, Nick Lors. Uh, I didn't look up, which is unusual for me. I'm not feeling good yesterday or today. I didn't look up C3 and apologize. In fact, he says the level of radioactivity is two percent. You know, three cubic uh, sugar cubes. Uh, what the limit is for the safe drinking water set by? United Nations has hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of subsidy companies. World Health Organization took off, so that gets a lot of a football play for the industry. And that is 
being used to bludgeon your future and your health and your loved ones and your friends and your future and the future generation and the species that were and you were supposed to be the stewards of and instead we just stomp on all the species as if they're going to fix themselves and get out of our way when our job is to get out of their way I thought And what I have to do to tell this story is is degrading. It's humiliating. And it's dangerous. We're not even out doing research. Because I lack donations. They have... And, and anybody who's been around a long time would have seen it over the years. The relentless attack about, upon anybody that said they donated or were going to donate were bombarded with personal messages, propaganda, videos that were cooked up to discredit me, to, to, to stop the biggest percentage they could of people that were funding the research. We, we lost, uh, we got 16 trips on the ocean, but we lost the mo one of the most, when we look back in the records, this will be one of the most significant times because we, we already had 16 days in on the population that is missing and we needed to keep that going to quantify the research. And we've seen the failures of the breeding colonies that existed. There's only a couple when there should be 46 million seabirds coming through. They were missing. All we found was the residential the seagulls, the comorants that don't are not indigenous, don't belong here. And the tickle ass, the tickle ass is like a small seagull in depiction, and they had a zero population, zero babies. We, we have them on their nest for a month and a half. Gestation is just a few weeks, not a month and a half, by the way. And so shame, shame on this person, Nick Loris, for coming out and making the claims, the, the incredibly exorbitant, royal, royally fictitious claims that he had made. It's, there's so many companies, Nestor Job, where to go to university to get a job to tell you a lie. And if, and if it works, they get a big payday. And it works. South Korea opposition leader hospitalized after a hunger strike. So we talked about this on August 24th. The Democratic Party of South Korea, the head, the f which ran again for the president against against um, the current president, which was a former prosecutor who had denied Fukushima even happened. Hours after Lee was transferred to hospital, the prosecutor said he requested an arrest warrant for him when he's weak and can't fight back. It's part of an investigation and development project and bribery allegations. Why didn't they do it before he went on a hunger strike, I wonder? Ban on Japan originate, and this is a problem when you don't hold the system accountable. You get so much corruption in there, you might never, ever after be able to hold it accountable. And we are at that tipping point. Ban on Japan originated seafood justified. So China's ban, and so the propaganda we're hearing about South Korea, China, Taiwan, and is is about um, proliferating the fabled story that nothing got out of the buildings that don't exist. All China's got to do is show that picture, and they can do a much better job than my shitty little picture. But all they can say is to the population of their country and the world is stand your ground and it's all over for the nuclear industry, including in China. So they can't do that. All they can do is come out and promote the story. So, uh, by the way, you know, the, the, the fabled dumping in the ocean was meant, the whole idea was that that was 
Japan throwing in the flag. And the International Atomic Energy Agency said, well, just dump it in the ocean and we'll come out with this cover story that is tritium. Don't worry, it'll all go smooth. And they ran around all around the world that first week, Grossi, Raphael Grossi, the Director General of the IAEA, which is just a, a little pimple on the UN's earth, banned on, because they have UNSCLEAR and IRPA and the ICRP, and many, many nuclear organizations at the UN, the Military Industrial Complex, which is 195 military, so what else do you call it? Ban on Japan originated seafood is justified and necessary, says China's foreign minister. Tokyo makes dumping, dumping, which has been going on for 12 years. Not maybe, not almost, but 12 years. And the dumping is about, you see how they look past the protest, there's no dumping, tritium, and they don't even have, well, it's not, a, not an accident that they don't call it tritium-3H, which is man-made tritium. So wait a second, you can't go to these communities because they're so radioactive, but nothing got out of the reactors, only 2.2 grams. So if less than 2.2 grams contaminated all these communities, the nuclear has no right to be on the planet, right? And if tritium contaminated all these communities, they definitely don't have a right to be on our planet. Is that true? But the fact that the buildings are actually gone had millions and millions of pounds in each building because they don't have a repository. And everything was in the buildings, by the way, is splitting atoms. It's, it's like an invisible snowstorm all day out of each site worldwide. And there's over 410 currently operating. But there's around 1,000 fuel pools worldwide. We're talking about commercial. We're not talking about the military industrial complexes. We're not talking about the institutes, the, the national laboratories, so-called national laboratories. You know, Han Hanford don't, and we've done the math on it, and there's many different ways to look at it. The best way is an aquarium six feet wide. That'd be a big aquarium. Imagine an aquarium that's six feet wide and 518 feet tall. That's a big aquarium, right? So imagine an aquarium six feet wide, 585, 518 feet tall, wrapped around the entire planet and then some again, and it's full of sludge from nuclear chain reactions and by the leader you're talking about seriously uh, lethal doses right away by the leader so if you took two liters of it to a train station in in a in a lead casket that's a foot thick top bottom and sides it'll kill everybody that walks past that lead casket just two liters it will kill everybody who walks past that for a million years that day each day but Dana, you know, it's a foot lead thick, yeah, but it needs six feet. So imagine 1.4 million gallons of that in the tank. Now, I'm sorry, imagine 1.4, uh, 1,400,000 of Fukushima tanks dumped into the ground, because that's what they've done that, of sludge, not tritiated water, but actual high level lethal splitting the atoms sludge which everything is downhill to the Columbia River, where they have droughts each year, so it liberated into the environment through drought and through dust and that. But it's also, it snows and rains each year heavily there, so that ends up washed a lot of it directly into the Columbia River, which feeds tens of thousands of farms downriver and millions of homes. Not people, but homes. So millions and millions of people. And ends up in the Pacific, Right where they happen to have killer whales that only eat Chinook, which are all emaciated. Not from the leukemia they have, of course, but from the lack of Chinook, they said. Japan and China and Taiwan and South Korea are deploying, employing despicable means to shift the blame on anybody else. So they're, they're, they're attacking each other about tritium 
instead of attacking each other about the perpetual emissions, continuous and constant, and the perpetual radioactive fallout that has already fallen and contaminated not just uh, local areas, but the entire ecosystem, the entire planet. That model is based on six years' emissions from a German institute. There are billion pounds from each of those prefectures. There's 14 of them marked here. They can't eat all that. Where do you think that ends up? Canada removed all restrictions after 93 days and said, no, nothing got out. 55 countries kept a ban on the food. For a decade, Canada removed all restrictions. They really couldn't ship it anywhere, only Canada. And everybody in Canada is sick because of it. Products originating from Japan is a completely justified, reasonably and unnecessary. And so when you weaken all your immune systems and they start jabbing you, want your kids to go to school? Jab them. You want to go back to work? Jab you. Your, your immune systems are already compromised. Then they, they start a fake war that was cooked up by the World Economic Forum in Russia and Ukraine and then ban commodities from a country that you can't replace it, except for nuclear, of course. They banned oil, gas, and coal. So they artificially then, they, after coming out of the, the scandemic, they jeopardized your future and your ability to feed yourself. And keep you fighting and struggling so you don't pay attention to them, right? And then come here with crazy stories. When that don't go over well, well dams magically break in countries and catastrophes that will cycle through the news and get you away from Fukushima, get you away from their crimes for a little while. And that's all it takes for you to forget about them. In another attempt to whitewash the nuclear contaminated water dumping, Japanese Prime Minister Kishida, who's def just a useful puppet, and other Japanese officials on Wednesday posed for photos and videos at the Prime Minister's office while eating food from the nuclear wasteland itself, surrounded by a nuclear wasteland. And I mean surrounded by nuclear wastelands. So you see, let me bring that back. You see Fukushima, nuclear power plant, right? It's right there. That color is pink of all colors. Is what they call, is is what everybody normally would call a nuclear wasteland. Is difficult to return because it's a nuclear wasteland. So call it what it is. So Tomoka, Okuma, Futabara are both on. You know that's Okuma and Futabara is on the south side or north side. These are nuclear wastelands. Nami, of course. Minamasoma, Lutia, Katsuru. These are nuclear wastelands. And then to suggest a tritium. But these models are not a tritium. Japan should take China. This is uh, United Nations, ex-United Nations. He says Japan should take China to the World Trade Organization, which is United Nations. The World Health Organization, United Nations, the IAEA, United Nations, and they all they're all they're all saying do this, do this, do this, do this. But what about me and you? You got no say. They're the only one that are gonna be acknowledged. They're just a corporation that has no sovereignty over your country. You've actually lost your planet. Japan should take China to the World Trade Organization. They'll probably win. It'll take a year or two years for the appeal, because they will appeal. And then they might win. But everybody's hanging on to that while the other ones are getting sick and dying. Japan could file a complaint with the World Trade Organization as a tactical move to reduce induce China to end, to punish 
punitive actions, Tokyo says, is not based on scientific ground. It's not based on scientific ground. It's a nuclear wasteland on top of that. The food was banned by 55 countries, but they, now they're going to pretend that never happened and only talk about the ocean. It's calling it a tactical political move. Alaska also suggested uh, Ark, uh, Alaska Akasaka also suggests Prime Minister Kishida new foreign minister ag argued a safety water discharge from Fukushima plant in Japan during a series of UN General Assembly meetings this week in New York to broaden the international understanding so another way to think about it was that Look at half of Japan. Half of Japan was banned by 55 countries. So every time it rains, that country, the whole country is going to wash huge radiation out into the ocean. Because this actually happened. They picked up 30 million one-ton bags, which I hope is enough evidence. Because if it's not, then I'm nothing I can do for you. Australia, nuclear too costly, too slow, and too risky for Australia. The nuclear industry in Australia is, and you've heard, if you've been around, you heard me say it at least several hundred times, they're insane. There's nothing off the table. There's no lie big enough to tell, too big to tell. And they've told every doozy. I've, they told the biggest ones I've ever heard, besides Japan, I guess. So Korea to expand emergency seawater radiation tests amid Fukushima woes. So Korea to expand emergency seawater radiation tests. And ultimately, they're, they're going to opt the number of tests, and they're going to keep doing it ahead of, the, ahead of the release of the treated water. So we'll maintain the, the emergency testing, emergency, because they just started after 12 years. We'll maintain the emergency testing system until the people are no longer worried about the issue. Think about it. But why aren't you testing, testing for safety? Why are you going to do it until people are no longer worried? What do you, like? And we, they, they put that, that uh, they framed it that way several dozen times. Several dozen times. They said all the samples have met the safety standards and no radiation been detected in domestic seafood. And they're checking for, to dispel public concern, they're only checking for tritium. And this is what they're using to go out and check for tritium. 
Now, they only start doing that since August the 24th, instead of for the last 12 years of actually checking for radiation, they've only checked for tritium. So that can't work unless the universities, the medias, um, all participate for 12 years in that law. That's as big as the law as it gets. So why are all the industries, why are all your checks and balances so willing to destroy your future and your present and, and put you in the hospital and destroy your newborn children? Why do they, why do they uh, dislike us so much? Why do they have that much contempt for us? What do we do to them? You got any idea how much it costs to run that boat? Just to buy the boat? I'm taking this big boat out in order to manipulate you in South Korea and Canada and everywhere else. They're doing the same thing. And they're only looking for tritium, but don't worry, we didn't find any. But how could you, why, why wouldn't you look for radiation? Why wouldn't you, why wouldn't you admit there was a meltdown? Very difficult for me to concentrate sometimes. I apologize. It's 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 even harder not to scream, and curse, and yell, and act out, and very difficult to be disciplined the entire time. I apologize. I'd rather be out researching every one of these days because they only come a few months a year here. And we're denied that again. The world will live to regret this, hopefully. We will maintain the emergency testing system until people stop paying attention. Your friends, the universities that hate your guts the most, the media that take great pride and make money lying to you. Here's the nuclear expert, expert, an expert. An expert of Korea Marine Environment Managed Corporation checking for tritium. So Korea banned seafood, seafood. But like 14 prefectures was banned by 55 countries for a decade right away. But so Korea got around to it in 2013 after everybody got sick anyway. So they got you anyway. China says they weren't asked to take part, f and so this is what I mean. You got Taiwan, South Korea, and China. Not Canada, U.S., Britain, anybody else. And they want our countries to protest tritium, and they are. They're artificially, they have nuclear organizations here going out pretending they're anti-nuclear protesting tritium to try to ignite the protest. And so nobody can have a conversation about anything on the tritium. If you go out and ask anybody, and if they don't, they'll, it's a 100% guarantee they're going to know a little bit. They're going to say, yeah, I've seen something. It's tritium, right? Because it's subconsciously been implanted. And if you try to talk anything else to them, they're, they're, they're going to get upset and call you a conspiracy theorist. When they're the conspiracy themselves to not save themselves. The remarks were made in response to China as refuted to join the International Monitoring Mechanism of the International Atomic Energy Agency, who's only looking for tritium and and they can't even find that. He's only visited the plant five times in twelve years, all of them this year, to promote the reuse of radioactive soil for growing food, no less, from the 30 million one-ton bags, and dumping, which has never stopped. The reactors are actually destroyed. They're, they're melted down. Did I ever mention that? Probably never mentioned that in the last 12 years. I apologize. should probably mention that for more often. How concerned should Malaysians be over the Fukushima radioactive wastewater release again? Right? And so this is, uh, and this is Yahoo News. It's meant to promote that conversation that nothing has gotten out and now whatever's getting out, don't worry, it's controlled. 
We got every flavor of stupid in the equation we noticed over the last since two months and five days. Japan's decision to discharge, treat it, discharge, decision, discharge, treat it from, into, cause and concerns. So the idea is to lead you away from any factual facts so you can't say, wait a second, two and two don't make four. Right, and so these are all These are all of those, and you see that consistently every single story, that same exact narrative. The idea is to make you think this never happened, and there's no pictures in their articles. The only picture they're going to show you is whichever useful idiot they got at the time playing their part. Imagine how sadistic you got to be to sit there to get your picture taken and manipulate the population. But imagine how empty your soul has to be to do something like that. Really, shouldn't these people automatically be locked up for life? They're very, very dangerous people. For the record, according to the, the perpetrator themselves, not the victims, the wastewater release plan, which is not stopped, is not stopped for... 12 years now allegedly just starting to release it each liter containing about 190 beckles of tritium tritium according to tepco themselves which was bankrupt right away and was nationalized by the japanese government is below the world health organization limit of 10,000 beckles which is un why why are you allowing un to poison you because that's poison it doesn't go away. It bounds organically, and so it's, it sequesters in your muscles, your organs, and your bones because it's bound organically because they got lots of little loopholes. And notice they didn't call it tritium-3H again. They call it tritium. And you're talking about UN. So the hoodwinking is 100% across the board, completely... Um, at a, that's out of control as it gets. You officially lost your planet. And there's only one thing left to do. You gotta try to you gotta try to be real now from here on out. You can't keep pretending that this is gonna fix itself, it's not. And I'm not gonna be fixing that. I'm completely isolated. Fukushima Baseball Federation seeks young empires amid a shortage. Young empires in the nuclear wasteland. Uranium price surged to 12 year high. Um, so, yellow cake is, they also refer to the stuff left over from the chain reaction as yellow cake. But the stuff that comes out of the ground that's refined chemically at the site is considered yellow cake. There are two different types of yellow cake. And I once said that a Dixie cup, which is a, like a one-third of a normal cup, you buy these little small containers of ice cream, they're very small, and you can buy like a hundred in a bag or something. They're called Dixie cups. A Dixie cup of this sludge we're talking about, post-chain reaction, will kill everybody in a restaurant in about 20 minutes for thousands of years every 20 minutes. But the yellow cake doesn't do it because it hasn't, that's from the mining, won't have those attributes. But both of them are considered yellow cake. So when you type a yellow cake, so many times that stuff is harmless. And most people can't articulate the law like I can, right? And they get browbeat without understanding that that was on purpose. That was to draw you into that conversation so they can they can belittle you and hopefully you never look at nuclear again, see? That's that's a construct. That's on purpose. A surge and that's so there was a company started up two years ago in Toronto, Canada, Ontario, Canada. And it bought up the physical uranium. It didn't take possession of it, left it where it was, but it bought it up at 
thirty dollars a pound or something. And that created an art of because they said we're not going to sell it. So the mining companies got to go back to work, and that meant the shares of those companies were going to rise a little bit. Then the the mass media promoted the stocks. And said there's a demand when there was no demand. They bought up a billion dollars of physical stuff. And they raised the money to do it. Because when the price went up, they can sell it and make a profit. So it was a guaranteed, it was an inside job. So now, at $65 a pound in the past month, because of inflation, that's still not enough for the miner to break even. But now they're calling it a, a, some kind of surge. And breaches last year's peak and reaches heights not witnessed since 2011. That's when the nuclear accident happened. And uranium stocks dove. They flatlined. And the next time they flatlined was the day it came out worldwide that they had convicted me, egregiously convicted me, I all add. Um, and gave me three gag orders. So this was big news in Asia anyway. And that next morning when that story came out, uranium stocks flatlined to like $17 a pound or something. Some ridiculous low price. I can't remember off the top of my head. I have it in my pile. I had just came in off a research expedition after four and a half months on the ocean, we were coming home, they arrested me when I came in and then discredited it and used that to discredit me. And it's never stopped since, right? But the world, the world, I'm, I hope at some point, will come to his senses. The shift comes in response to the soaring gas prices triggered by Russia's full-scale invasion of Ukraine. No, the gas, the surge in the gas, soaring gas prices was United Nations signature countries, 195 countries, put an embargo against Russia's commodities, but those countries didn't try to replace the commodities from another country, so now you automatically have inflation in 195 countries that are big shakers and movers worldwide. So now you have inflation worldwide. And this was done on purpose. This was well organized. Uh, Vladimir Putin, Angela Merkel, Justin Trudeau, many, many of the current and past, recent past and, and recent present uh, future so-called leaders were part of young global leaders with the World Economic Forum. Quite a coincidence that they're all now currently or just recently in power. Global effort to combat climate change from carbon free. Well, nuclear has to burn gas, oil, and coal. It has dedicated plants, large plants. You just get rid of the nuclear plant and just run the gas, oil, coal plants you're using to run the nuclear sites. Nuclear, first off, each reactor needs a million gallons a minute, 4,500 tons of water a minute. You're talking about an enormous, absurd amount of electricity just for that. And the whole facilities are basically a million pieces. There's 900 people working on this site. It's a huge resource intensive site. These are, these are not small sites. These are infrastructurally, these are massive. They need their own gas, oil, and coal plants dedicated to build it, to run it, and for 60, 100 years to de so-called decommission it. The fuel pools are hemorrhaging radiation into the environment the entire time. And I mean, every day, a stunning amount of radiation is released to aerosols through the evaporation of the fuel pools, about 120,000 liters per pool, two pools in each building. Each liter is going to be trillions and trillions of anthropogenic plutonium, uranium, americium, neptunium, strontium. Wherever they land is going to be tritiated water forever because they're pulsing energy every second. Orano, which is France's, used to be a Riva, majority state-owned nuclear company, 
It revealed a shortage of critical chemicals prompted it to advance plan maintenance in his Niger. But what they've done in Niger, this is where they get their cheap uranium. Very high essay, very high grade uranium. And so what they've done for 60 years is caused a civil war. They, they destroyed the whole country. Every person was affected. And all bordering countries have been under siege because they're arming the rebels to create the, the, the instability so that they can have their cheap uranium. That's how they fund their reactors. And then to, to make it even worse, they take their fuel and they reprocess it. The worst thing you can do for a planet is reprocess this incredibly toxic fuel because they have to boil a nitrous acid at 3,000 degree Fahrenheit temperatures to extract the reclaimable hot particles that they're seeking to get their hands on. Now, this is 2 billion times more toxic than industrial poison. But when you put it through a chain reaction again, I'm going to multiply it by 2 billion again, basically. Everything is a hot particle. Everything that comes out of the anthropogenic uh, fuel, I should say, is a hot particle. Once it's gone through a chain reaction, everything coming out of it, is, there's nothing benign. Iran or French's majority, and so they, they caused a civil war in Niger. Prices now reached a pre-Fukushima level of $73 per pound. Well, like, there's less reactors, not more. It's 100% artificial. The World Nuclear Association, which is not a trade body, it's a lobbying group, Raised a forecast for nuclear power contributions of global electric generation because they do that all the time. That's their job. They're lobbying groups, and they anticipate, but they wouldn't. They wouldn't say we have this is going to show up and, and need this much uh, fuel and whatever. And fuel is a very fraction of this equation, by the way. More than 140 reactors may operate longer than previously expected because this is how. To, this is what. This is what the little so-called glut or uh, demand for fuel is going to be because they're keeping old, fragile reactors that are brittle and are capable of melting down or cracking the containment because of the brittleness. They're going to be kept open to maintain their power output. They're falling. And so what they've done was all reactors worldwide over the last year increased their percentage of power they put more rods in the reactors so they can maintain their artificial numbers and by doing so because these are all and dangerous and fragile and brittle reactors these are high pressure you know thousand two thousand psi and you're going to what you're going to increase the horsepower the fuel and the temperature by proxy and but there, and then the bombardment of the neutrons in brittle the the containment. Once you take it out after eighteen months, it goes in the fuel pool. There's no containment. It's still splitting the same atoms. It's still boiling water, but it's not under the pressure. But it's one hundred twenty thousand liters a day, and it's still splitting atoms. And that the rods are cracked in billions of pieces. Billions of microscopic cracks, rather. And these microscopic r cracks allow relentless amount of atoms, isotopes, to flow out of them. They get captured in the water. The water evaporates up. You liberate the atoms into the environment. And the majority of nuclear power plants are surrounded by farms, as far as you can see. And, and drinking water is another favorite one for them to set up. This is a planned attack upon humanity now. After 80 years of massive emissions, we have the loss of almost all the species. We're next. And they're going to see it through. They have no intentions of slowing down. And because there's no descending voices allowed, and those in the know are a part of it, and I can't even challenge anything because we're running on nickels and dimes all the time. We're barely keeping the operation 
alive. It's been like that for several years. Something has to give, and it ain't going to be me. Imports of Japanese seafood dip for the fifth month in August. Despite the fact it takes four to five hours now, extra a day to do the show. Imports of Japan seafood dip for the fifth month in August, South Korea. So Korea I'll find that beer with me. I know I got it there somewhere. One more try. Officially, I got it. I thought I had it right there. So I was just looking for the amount of fish to shipped each year. And I can't find it for the life of me. Until now. True fact, true check, not fact check. So Japan has exported a total of 708,000 tons of seafood to South Korea since 2011. That's 1.5 billion pounds. 1.5 billion pounds. But South Korea says they're not, in, you know, uh, imports are down. And thank, all I can say is thank goodness. Just gonna move that stuff down so I can find it next time a bit easier. Okay, and away we go. Let's get back at it. Radium. So radium's been Weaponized. So right back in the day, they discovered radium, and Marie Curie lost both of her hands, remember? They, so they, didn't, they knew this was dangerous, right? They were actually using radium heaters because it gives off a lot of heat, but that kills you not too long after. And they're showing children with radium heat. The nuclear industry knew the ultimate outcome of that, by the way. Radium and beauty, so radioactive perfume, radioactive makeup, radioactive eyelash. And they targeted children and girls in particular. The radium water, I mean, that was such terrible, terrible stories, these stories, because the sickness from them is, it's just unbelievable. Radium imagination therapy. Pure uranium water. But this one here, this, this uh, jug, you will put the water in it and wait for a day or something. And then you would drink all the water and that was supposed to make you feel better. And here's health. But that, that will 100% would have killed you, right? Radium appliances. Radium chocolate. I don't know what the hell that is off the top of my head. I got to look at that when I get a better chance. No wood has ever been burned in these old world fireplaces. No, no, sh no flue for smoke to go up. These were uranium, chunks of uranium refine uranium would give off heat and radiate everybody in the house till he died but um, so that's pretty wicked radium hand cleaner right something everybody can enjoy 
Everybody can get sick and die. Fukushima nuclear plant operator says the first round, this is the Canadian media. And look how, and these people know what they're doing. They know that they're, they're going to hurt people every time they open their mouth. And they get nice suits, and they get makeup artists, and they feel special. And ultimately, they were the worst creatures humanity ever created. Freeing radioactive wastewater. This is the alleged emissions. The first time they released any came out this. And then that flows out an underground tunnel, I guess. And uh, we've never seen a picture of the thousand tanks for some reason. They roll out all the notorious apologists. That creature took me to court. That's an American, by the way, from Woods Hole Oceanographic Institute. Took me to court and gave me gag orders so I couldn't tell you how evil he actually is. I posted videos at um, Rumble last couple of days and uh, they didn't show up. I sent them emails last night and they didn't reply. Fukushima nuclear plant operator says the first round, so Rumble is where you're supposed to be able to go to, to get uncensored, right? Well, you were wrong if that's what you thought. First round of release of treated Fukushima water completed. And one of their mottos at uh, Rumble is we don't, we don't censor people. I can't even live stream there or on YouTube since August the 24th. Not by, they didn't officially ban me. Uh, allegedly it's hackers that have hacked YouTube and hacked Rumble. So the question is why don't they fix their hack? First round of release of treated Fukushima water completed. Well, there was so much blowback, they decided, because this was supposed to be nonstop. There's no such thing as a round. I've never heard that expression in all these 12 years. It's the first time I've ever heard it is in that headline there. Uh, well, over the last couple of days, I should say. So you see the sediment right there? That's washing off the site. That's washing out from under the site. That's radioactive emissions, basically. And then, right, they say the first rounds, and then it's tritium. Not even tritium 3H, but tritium. As the volume of the process, process, which I showed you earlier, simply can't be true, it resulted cooling, melted nuclear fuel, the majority of it blew out of the building or went China syndrome. TEPCO decided to release approximately 31,000 tons of water in the first rounds during the current fiscal year through March. And I've never heard that narrative before. This is the first time we've seen these numbers. They're going to release another 7,800 tons later this month. Pending checks on tritium. So... Claiming that nothing but tritium is getting or got out of these buildings, where do we put that on the scale of, oh, of the world's biggest lie? Well, at the very top of it, right? So there's no tritium in the bags. The bags are cesium. They're not even checking, they say, for uranium, plutonium. And that 14 prefectures were banned by 55 countries because it was radioactive and not tritium. So to invoke the word tritium, that they're checking on tritium, no Fukushima products imported to Bruni. All imported farm and seafood products must be accompanied by a health certificate. Uh, so they're not checking it themselves. They need a. They want a certificate, and they're going to trust the people that are saying that nothing got out, and that the food is safe despite they're growing it right alongside them. There's 30 million one-ton bags that they admit to. There's 105,000 sites of storage in 2019, but there was 150,000 
a couple of years before that as sites. There's about 60 million tonnes of contaminated soil that's being stored, planned to be stored, outside the Fukushima Daiichi perimeter fence. So, so they say 60 million. Contaminated soil. It's not contaminated, it's nuclear fallout. Now, Fukushima products imported to Bruni. Uh, I don't believe that. Oh, yeah, all imported farm and seafood products are accompanied by a health certificate. So if that's their evidence, then they have no evidence that it's safe. Because you're going to rely on a com country that grows food alongside a one-ton bag's radiation, then you're not being realistic. The Hitachi City Hall is flooded due to torrential rain in Ibaragi Prefecture, so that's a nuclear wasteland. And look how much damage, why are the windows broken out at the top of these one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine story buildings? Why are the windows blown out? What kind of storm did they actually have there? That blows out the windows nine stories above the ground. And so it seems like the only media we're, we're coming across are able to find, everybody is, if they're arguing with it all, they're arguing about tritium. They're, if they acknowledge any other isotope, they're referring you to the World Health Organization or United Nations, which obviously, unfortunately, have no redeeming qualities whatsoever. Individuals who are entrusted with protecting the safety and the lives of the people should never casually say something was unexpected. And notice that none of the stories in the last two months have showed you that picture and told you there was nothing to worry about and there was only tritium. The U.S. has fallen behind in nuclear energy no, they're keeping all their old um, brittle reactors up and running. Radioactive material leaks detected at Japan's nuke uh, fuel research facility. This is Fukushima site they're showing you, though, for some reason. Uh, these tanks are part of the 1,000 tanks that they talk about. And they say 1,000 large tanks. Well, the tanks you're looking at in the foreground are not large tanks. But that makes up the sum of the 1,000 tanks they're talking about. We've counted them independently, and in, in I've just I've lost track of how many pictures. There's over 1,000 pictures. <coughs> over 1,000 pictures. I can't find 1,000 tanks in any pictures. The detection of radioactive material leaks in one of his nuclear fuel research facilities sparked fear in Japan. Japan's Atomic Energy Agency, which was created post-Fukushima, said that until now there has been no report of adverse health effects on the health and staff or the surrounding environment as of now, until now. A lot... Of, Unless you're getting a huge dose from the fuel rods, you're not going to know it till later, typically, right? They're going to have an absolute catastrophic event, but it won't manifest in the community until, um, who knows, months or years later, right? So whenever you see that kind of framing narrative means they had a significant release. There has been no reports. So do you think the people who are... To the people, locals, it might seem like they have the flu or diarrhea or any other numbers of ailments they'll associate with anything but the sight. You can't breathe it. You can't smell it or hear it or feel it or taste it or touch it or pick it up. You, you can't perceive it. 
The leaks were detected within the plutonium fuel development. Plutonium fuel development room, number three. At uh, Japan's Atomic Energy Agency's nuclear fuel cycle engineering laboratories, in other words, a total disaster. Located in Tokai Village, Ibaragi Prefecture, which are confirmed nuclear wastelands, by the way. On September the 8th, pollution, you mean radioactive fallout? Not pollution, caused by radioactive materials. At four locations, four different locations in the facility. Plutonium, they call it pollution for some reason. This is a plutonium facility, so that's what it is. We're talking about is plutonium, not pollution. The plutonium was discovered during a routine inspection of a glove box. These are segregated areas that are meant to keep the particulates from escaping. But the people who put their hands into the gloves to manipulate the material are getting incredible doses of radiation. The gloves need to be six feet thick lead. Glove box. They call them glove boxes. But they should be called a high level dangerous radioactive control uh, areas or something. But not glove boxes, like it's in your car. Right? They always try to give things a benign and familiar name to disarm you, to make you complacent. The contamination was found both above and below the glove box to highest levels around 33 becquels of plutonium, which is an evacuation zone for any nuclear site pre-Fukushima, by the way. And which, you know, you can't just measure, you don't have, there's no such thing as a Geiger counter that measures plutonium you got to use very stationary, expensive equipment with lead bricks. So right away, you know they're lying to you. And it had not been in recent use. It doesn't need to. The plutonium-239 has 10 half-lives. Each one is around 24,000 years. The cause of the radioactive material leak is under investigation, so they don't know where it came from. How can you quantify there's no issue when you don't even know where it came from, for goodness sakes? And because it's months down the road, is that like Montebello, where they waited four months before you told you they had a, a, an event? And then said, don't worry, we're going to check the water next week, four and a half months later. And by the way, oh, we didn't find anything? Yeah, because it's four and a half months later, and the Mississippi washed it down into all those communities. So they don't know what's going on. It's under investigation. Just don't ask any questions. Authorities, which is a stretch and a half, at the laboratory suspected the radioactive materials may have sped, seeped, seeped, leaks, seeps. How does it seep out of equipment? It has to be a leak, see? Uh, and I shouldn't even use the word leak. They got me doing it. There has to be a hole somewhere in the room where it is escaping from. And because it's a gas, it's going to escape pretty quick. Radioactive emissions detected at Japan's nuclear research facility. Like what? Really? They got friends worldwide. The International Atomic Energy Agency hasn't cracked that code yet. Why did they got to do the research with such a bad history of cover-ups? How can we even have a future with this organization? So the Japan's Nuclear Energy Agency, Atomic Energy Agency, confirmed the detection of radioactive material in one of its nuclear fuel research facilities, but no adverse effects, no instant effects on the health of the staff or the surrounding environment. No, because it won't show up till later. Because it happened months ago, Right, this is what this is what they had a big release. They waited months before they told you. That's what happened. At four locations within the facility, not around the box, 
but in the facility. So it happened four or five months ago. They waited for the, the emissions to vent out of the building. Then they told you about it. The Japanese government is promoting the greater use of nuclear power as a low carbon energy source, but the country's nuclear plants are running out of storage capacity. The country, the entire country, is running out of storage capacity. Should they just dump it in the ocean, I guess? That's what they're doing at Fukushima, see? So everybody else should say, well, we, we ran out of room, Let's, we got to dump it in the ocean, we got nowhere else to put it in the United Nations, like, sure. The problem stems from Japan's stall nuclear fuel recycling program to reprocess plutonium from the spent fuel for reuse, which is mixed oxide fuel. It's illegal in Canada and the United States. That hasn't stopped them from doing it, but it's illegal. The government has continued to pursue the program despite serious technical setbacks. They've been trying to build a facility for over 30 years. 30 years. It was only supposed to take two years. It's 30 years later. 30 years past its, its um, opening date. And the mayor says the town will only get poorer if we just keep waiting. We should do whatever is available now. Well, there's lots of other things available. I'm sure nuclear is not the only thing available in Japan. About 19,000 tons of spent fuel, a byproduct of nuclear power generation, is stored at the power plants across Japan, taking up about 80% of their storage capacity. But see, the problem, now you're talking about 41 million pounds, but that's not true. It's obviously infinitely more than that. They have 50-something reactors. So they're sending their fuel to France to get reprocessed for the whole time. To ship MOX nuclear fuel assemblies from France in 2020. To reduce its plutonium overseas by about one ton from the current 11 tons. Twenty-four thousand pounds, which is roughly what came out of building four in plutonium, by the way. In pl just plutonium. Plutonium, Max fuel was produced in France using plutonium extracted from the spent nuclear fuel from the nuclear plants. But they sell it to Sellafield. They send it to Sellafield to do the same thing for the last forty years. So currently, they actually have forty-seven tons of plutonium in Japan. 47 tons. In order to get that much, you had to send a ridiculous amount to Sellafield and Donna Ray and the, the La Hague in France of just plutonium. 103,000 pounds of plutonium. It's enough to make 50,000 bombs, very powerful bombs if you add tritium to them, right? In order to decrease the stockpile, it's most efficient to burn MOX fuel at Japanese nuclear power plants, said Orano, Orano, which makes mixed oxide fuel. Everything to gain, nothing to lose by that statement. But you, you can't burn MOX fuel. What you put in is the same amount that comes back out. And what you're putting, taken out, when you put it in a fuel pool, is just billion times worse than the other fuel in the fuel pool. The emissions from it for, for infinity are stunning isotopes. Right, the biggest byproduct is serious curium isotopes and plutonium. 
nasty, deadly body isotope stuff because you incredibly enhanced it. And just to liberate it in the first place, to create the mixed oxide fuel, the releases in the environment from the studies we've already covered over many, many years, um, shows the complete contamination of the North Seas and the Arctic and Europe. Just from Sellafield, Donneray in Scotland, and La Hague, and another plant they have in France. By the way, La Hague, reprocessing mixed oxide site in France, has 500 security guards. 500 security guards. 500 a day around the site. 500 security guards. Because, you know, it's like a banana and a potato chip walking in sunshine and sleeping on airplanes, Dana. So Japan Electric Power Company have entrusted the British, which is Sellafield and Donneray, and the French, which is La Hague, to reprocess their spent nuclear fuel to promote nuclear fuel recycling. So when they say they only have 41 million pounds of fuel rods, it's because they've been shipping it out of the country for many, 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 well, for decades. A troubled, troubled nuclear fuel reprocessing plant. Troubled. Look how big these sites are, by the way. Just to make fuel. So they're using fuel, reusing, taking fuel rods across the country was the idea, but instead they got to ship it to France. So they got to stick it on a ship, ship it there. Got to reprocess it. Got 500 security guards to keep an eye on it. Then they slowly bring it back to the freight ships, and then they stick it on special ships and ship it back to Japan. None of that goes into the equation for his footprint, by the way. Construction of the plant began in 1993 and was supposed to be finished four years later. I said two, I think. But completion was delayed 23 times and construction costs soared to 27 billion, which is 2.6 trillion yen from the initial 760 billion yen. 760 billion yen is seven hundred and sixty million dollars. Seven hundred and sixty billion dollars. Canadian? Wait out. No. Or six point it's seven billion dollars Canadian. Is less than a billion yen. So twenty seven point six billion US dollars from the initial uh, half a billion dollar estimate. It's crazy stuff, isn't it? An additional 700 billion was injected to the plant for safety precautions, which is another close to a billion dollars. But only four reactors in the country currently burn the MOX fuel, resulting in the consumption of about two tons well, you're not consuming it, you're just using it for a cycle, then it goes into a fuel pool again. It's, it's still fuel rods, you don't diminish it. It's not like a blog where you burn down the ashes, just the volume doesn't change. Nuclear fuel recycling policy has already failed and the reprocessing plant is unnecessary. And they show, they show you a picture of Fukushima for some reason. Uh, silver 110 detected in marine life. All water samples off China it was collected contained strontium-90. What year was that? 2011. Strontium-90 didn't peak until uh, a thousand days later. And, and then it's a 100, 100 to 1 ratio for every cesium-137 is 100 strontium-90. Strontium-90 is not the only byproduct. And strontium isotopes. 
French map of cesium 137 disposition for Fukushima shows the U.S. is more contaminated than Western Japan. I'm a little shocked that the world is still sleeping on this. I'm, I'm a little terrified that the world is now so silent that the world is actually out there protesting tritium, the cover story. I can't stream on YouTube. I can't stream on Rumble anymore since August the 24th, but not officially from YouTuber, they said they didn't do nothing. Everything is normal on their end. Use another browser is what they told me in the chat room they have. With over a billion users, I was the only person in the chat room with a question. What's the odds of that? This is a plutonium-239 dispersal. Uh, North America. Up to 99% of the offsprings died after eating low-level contaminated food, low-level anthropogenic man-made radioactive food. And the very high abnormality rates include severe and rare deformities. So they, they went into the abandoned community, went into the houses and took plants back to Tokyo to their laboratory and fed insects to plants from inside people's houses and 99% of the offspring died. Radioactive forest is a permanent risk, and they can't decontaminate a forest or the ground there, see? Must be cut down, and every gust of wind showers cesium particles over the village. And so when they have forest fires, you liberate it all back into the environment. So if you don't have a forest fire there for a thousand years, when you do, all that radiation goes right back into the environment because you can't destroy it. And so the forest fires in the northern hemisphere are nasty fallout. Radioactive forest is a permanent risk. You can't, what are you, if you cut it down, what are you going to do with it then? And who's going to get radiated to do it on top of that? How do you decide who's going to get killed with radioactive fallout? All of the western United States, most of the East Coast, Midwest, and Canada covered with airborne particles at various altitudes on March the 20th. Fukushima plume model shows based solely, solely on reactor one explosion. And the majority of the models I show you are based on reactor one's explode, um, not explosion, but venting. It's very rare to see number one used in the model. And the model obviously is not going to be, they're not going to tell you the truth. There was an unprecedented phenomenon from using the salt waters for about 60 days or so. And this was show and tell for the most part. The reason we were doing it is to pretend they had control of it. But they knew pouring salt water on melted reactors in one and two that, that went chain, China syndrome right away. Three and four don't even exist anymore. The fuel pull in reactor one was gone immediately within a few, uh, just a millionth of a second detonation. But when you spray the salt water on the enormous temperatures we're talking about, up to 9,000 degree Fahrenheit temperatures, you're going to liberate the sulfur. And the sulfur is now known as a sulfur peroxide hydrogen buckyball. And what it does is the sulfur, when you liberate at high temperatures, and you knew this from the 50s, ocean testing, you would create these spherical balls that are like a soccer ball kind of design. And they can ingest all the hot particles from the meltdown because they're all hot particles. And now you turn it into a super hot particle. And uh, they done that on purpose. They knew what the results were. The wor the, like the nuclear industries, the nuclear universities, all understood the significance of what they were watching. And they just sat back and smiled and said, well, the world doesn't know how it works, so we're not telling them.
So pretending that building doesn't exist, but we have models and studies of the fallout, the media has symmetrically, statistically destroyed the capacity for critical thinking skills worldwide with this 80 years of this nonsense. 80 years, it's not nonsense, it's, it's deadly propaganda. It's brutal, relentless, and so it's really truly is uh, when so one of the big things that people can't seem to wrap their mind around is how deep this rabbit hole actually goes. Paste that over here first. So almost every nuclear power plant has this attribute. It's surrounded by farms, and every nuclear power plant is hemorrhaging radiation. After Fukushima, before Fukushima, 100 becquerels a kilogram of cesium, which is the l one of the last ones you're worried about, by the way. The reactors actually melted down. Its safety is nuclear waste and after it is considered safe to eat. But remember, you know, they didn't just raise the limit, they pretended the buildings weren't damaged. 50 becquerels a kilogram, by the way, in humans lead to irreversible lesions in the vital organs. You can put 200 million atoms on the head of a needle, you can't see it. Do you really think you can perceive 50? Right? Because 50 is not a big number. So then they know this. They're, they're well aware of this. So how could they not know? That this was a real bad idea. When you got endless studies. Acknowledging how. Uh, food and plants uptake the radiation. There's no illusions about. There's absurd amount of these studies. There's no way that the nuclear plants don't know it. So when you see, start looking up nuclear power plants, you notice they're all surrounded by farms. And you, you, you're you honest and you acknowledge it's the most carcinogenic thing that exists. Then how do you justify engineering these places where they're prime farm, active farmland? Smalley mascot asks the, the victims of society to gargle to stay safe from anthropogenic man-made radiation. When, I mean, you, you got caricatures, cartoonish characters, a.k.a. mascots, indoctrinating the children to be complacent. But they're the very last ones that should be complacent. Senior scientists, it's irreversible heart damage for children with 50 becquerels a kilogram of just cesium. And how do you avoid it when 14 prefectures are exporting who knows how much worldwide, but they grow a billion pounds each a year, and when they're willing and have been shown over and over to grow it in the nuclear wastelands, the actual nuclear wastelands, right alongside of tens of thousands of in the middle of millions of one-ton bags of radiation. And so when you look at what they've been doing for 80 years, you start to understand there's some really sick people. And the majority of them got great educations and work in the nuclear industry. So they know all this radiation gets sucked up by the food. So why are they growing food alongside of almost every nuclear power plant in the world? They know there's all kinds of other adverse side effects. So why they grown food in a new, you know, places? These uh, reactors are hemorrhaging radiation from the fuel pools. The fuel pools are perpetual machines. You're making perpetual radioactive fallout, and you can't contain it because they're still splitting the atoms in the fuel pools, and there's no containment. Do you know how trees suck up radiation and the outcome of that? And so why are you growing food when there's a ridiculous amount of documentation saying that's the very wrong thing to do? 
low radiation doses do cause cancers, but there's 1,800 diseases and illnesses and autoimmune deficiencies and injuries. And who don't like potatoes? Who don't like french fries? Right? So there's no excuse that they didn't know because there's endless studies shown how plants will suck up the radiation. So why are they doing this? That's a question you're going to have to worry about. And that's something you better worry about. Why did 16,000 people run away from Fukushima? Because of tritium? No. We had a million beckles of xenon 133. We had 20 million particles of iodine-131 per liter of fallout in Canada on the west coast. In central Canada was another study of 220 million atoms per liter, which means everybody's food sources now are officially contaminated and their drinking water. Why, on goodness sakes, is the world being silent? Because that's not an option. Leukemia risk peaks in a few years. Yeah, but not not just thyroid cancer. Right? Not only does thyroid get saturated, and with the numbers we're talking about, like 220 million atoms per liter, that's, there's no way to escape it worldwide. And pretending this didn't happen is the, the literally the worst thing we could do. Not coming up with solutions for mitigation is the worst is the worst case scenario, and that's the, that's the path we're on. And there's nobody out there trying to educate the population, which f terrifies me. It got me ran directly into the ground with no option. I have no options. I have no choice but to come out and do the research when possible and to come out and try to reason with humanity that you, you are not going to win this battle. You are not getting away from this. You need to act accordingly. This, you, this is Earth's last stand. You are that generation, and this will define you. What's going to be your legacies? You sat in silent? Is that your legacies? Well, it ain't the legacy of the people that are here all the time. I can tell you that much. It bloody well ain't my legacy. And what I'm trying to do to you is, with these kinds of follow depictions, it, it doesn't do it justice. It's infinitely worse than what I'm showing you, the follow. It's infinitely more than that. And what do you think all that food is going to do to the victims? Because it matters. And you matter, and that's why I'm here every day. I'm here every day. I can, and the research and everything else, in the in the faint glimmer of hope that's left of our planet, that the world will come to its senses and will fight this monolithic enemy of humanity in the eight million species, and that's everybody apparently in the nuclear industry and universities and journalists have turned their backs on you and they're leading the charge against your extinction and the extinction of the species of your planet. All I gotta do is stand up. They can't handle you. They can't handle you. They'll crumble. And all you gotta do is stand your ground. You gotta speak up. You gotta get active. You gotta make a stand. This is Earth's last stand. I'll see you tomorrow. Have a great day. Have a great night. I'll see everybody in the next one. Take care, everybody.